Hello everyone, welcome to Voice Essentials. Honestly, can I ever get the start of this show right? You've got to tune in every week just to see me stuff it up when I, when I start every show. It's either the audio or we had some technical problems at the beginning of the show. I've had ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. It is so good to be hanging out with you. Um, what's the 21st of October? Literally, I only have eight weeks of teaching left for my year here in Australia. Obviously, we're in the Southern Hemisphere, so we have our summer break um, over December, January. So, um, yeah, eight weeks to go. It's, 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 I don't know, how many days is that until Christmas? Wow. Okay, we've got lots to achieve between now and then, and, and one of the most exciting things is we've got some more guests on the show, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a guest, Jeff Ramsey, on the show. I'm going to introduce you to him in a moment. I, I already know we are in for a real treat. Um, and uh, Jeff uh, is just, uh, we've only had, because of our technical issues before the show, we've only had a few moments of chat and I am, I just already just, this guy is, is, is a nice dude. Okay, we'll get to him in a moment. Um, he's waiting for us. So very quickly, just wanted to let you know, let me show you something. I am really excited. In a couple of weeks, and, and now this is a premiere, a world first. You get to see this. The new cover of Voice Essentials 3. As you know, we've got Voice Essentials 1, Voice Essentials 2. And now the new, um, the new cover of Voice Essentials 3. We finished tracking the vocals Wednesday last week. So that's all done. Now we've just got to go through and compile them and all those sorts of things. We are aiming for a launch date. For those of you who are champing at the bit to get, your, get a hand on the new exercises, and, and seriously, these are very cool. There are some really, really challenging exercises on this new collection. Um, and uh, November 4 is when I hope to, to launch that for you. So. That's in, what, a couple of weeks. So I'm hoping to let you know about that, and I'll let you know about that in the show. Of course, not only are we releasing the new Voice Essentials 3 collection, we're also releasing all of the lesson sheets that go with the full 50 exercises across 1, 2, and 3. Really excited. And we've done um, the two of the tracks uh, are um, learning harmonies, like Harmony 101. They're a lot of fun. I think you're going to really enjoy those. So anyway, I'll let you know more about that as we get there. Um, but really excited because it is sounding super groovy. Uh, and I'm hoping to get that to you really soon. Enough of that. I really want to spend a lot of time with our next guest who, man, this guy's CV is like, he has sung with the who's who of the industry. I am really looking forward to learning more, as I'm sure you are, um, when we come right, come back right after this, and I introduce you to the one and only Jeff Ramsey. Sound check. Check one. Check two. Hey, Jeff. Hey there. Hey, so good to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, whereabouts are you? I'm, I'm just going to see if I can up your up your um, audio there for a bit because we didn't get the chance to test that due to all the challenges that we were having. I, hopefully, that'll that'll be about right. Now, all right. whereabouts are you in the world? I am here in Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. And yeah. for those for those of us who do not live in the U.S., whereabouts in the U.S. is Boston? That's the northeast part of. Uh, the states yeah, okay. uh, not too far from new york about four hours north of new york yeah okay that's so cool yes you know I've, i i if i was to visit the u.s and do you know what? i've never had the opportunity to visit but if i was to visit I, it actually is the east coast that i would want to see i'd want to see dc and new york and all of that sort of area so you you in, as far as i think a lot of the rest of the world you live in a pretty pretty cool part of it yeah, and, you know, there's a lot of history here in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, you know, the start of, of so many things of of uh, of, of uh, American civilization. So it's it's really uh, cool, and of course, uh, you know, um, um, this is where I went to school as well, 
and uh, it's been it's it's a great place. It's it's wonderful, and it's 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 changed so much over the past oh twenty years or so. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and of yes. course, when you talk about it's where you went to school, uh, uh, I, I take it we're, talk, we're referring to Berkeley. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean. Uh, in my humble view of the world, um, Berkeley is regarded as one of the leading, if not the leading place for contemporary music as far as tertiary education goes. Yes. What, tell us a bit more about your experience there. Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, um, as a teacher or a student or all of it. Let's, <laughs> let's, start, let's start at student and move through to teacher because you, you, okay. yeah, you do the whole gamut. <laughs> Well, uh, as as far as uh, the uh, student goes, I mean, it was a it was a great place. I mean, I went to school with uh, some great singers. You probably have heard of Paula Cole, uh, who I went to school with, and Layla Hathaway, and wow. uh, quite a few uh, people who are doing you know wonderful still out there. Uh, it was a place where I really got to hone my chops, vocal chops, but also, you know, the harmony stuff that you were just talking about in your book. Congratulations on that and the, and the third series coming out. Um, it was a, uh, it was just a place uh, brimming with just, you know, talent. Uh, yeah. um, amazing talent uh, and people, you know, it was uh, <clears throat> where I, I still have those friends that, you know, they say that about college. Those are the people you're probably gonna still keep in touch with after all the years later you know how tr how true is that i mean we won't dwell on that for too long but that is it is a truism that was said to me when i started university yeah. you know yeah. um be kind to those around you because they're the people that are going to be giving you work your cohort ends up being the people for example um the guy that produced my voice essentials one two and three series i went through uni with him you know right. um you know these are the people that you end up doing a lot of work with right it's very true. Apps, I, I, yeah, I mean, we can both attest to that. Yeah. And, you know, you, you don't know those things. You don't know those things years later. Uh, uh, you know, one of the reasons I was able to uh, do session work out when I lived in Los Angeles was because of a Berkeley connection. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. It, is, yeah. it is a thing. It's a thing. Um, yes. And and tell us a bit more about so you did you did college at Berkeley which is just yes. you know amazing yes but but I I mean I before we had our tech issues I had <laughs> I had your website ready to show and we were going to be all fang dangle we are going to have to fly simple but yes. I, so I'll just have to let people know and I can't yeah. show you all but there is a link everyone in the description section of the video to <laughs> Jeff's website. Um, uh, where we, where I mean, your your CV, the people that you have had the opportunity to work with are just, as I said at the beginning, uh, the who's who of the industry. I mean, you've got let me let me list them off. Um, Layla Hathaway, Al Jarreau, I yes. mean, stop yeah. it. Patrice yes. Russian, uh, Maxwell, Celine Dion, Whitney yes. Houston, Diana Ross, Barbara Stry, the Barb's. I mean, come <laughs> on! How did you? How did yeah. you? Um, what? What opened those doors for you? What? Wh how did you get those opportunities? You know, it's 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 funny how those things work out. Um, well, Layla, of course, I went to school with, and she really yep. started that all. Layla, I went to school with. So, um, and after that. Uh, the people that heard me with Layla and uh, heard me and the two ladies that I sang with, with Layla, uh, loved what we did so much that they were like, well, we'd like you to come and work with Al Jarreau and stuff. And so, you yeah. know, you, you know what happens is you start getting those names, you start putting names under your belt like that. And that leads to other things to happen. And 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 like I was telling you, the, the one session uh, when I started doing uh, session work, when I moved out there, the one person that got me into the session world was another colleague that I went to Berkeley with. Mm. And through that, he got me to meet another colleague and great friend to this day, uh, Dorian Holly, who I just uh, uh, adore. He really looked out for me when I was in L.A. And mm. uh, he got me on the work. He's the one who got me the gig to, to sing with Tina, Tina Arena. 
Ah. What I was telling you about. Yeah, who are, yeah. Australia's own so, Tina Arena. So who, for those, yeah. yeah, those who don't know who Tina Arena is, which would be everyone outside of um, Australia and France, because she is yes. massive in France. Yes. She, to this very day, is one of my absolute favourite Australian pop rock vocal. Yes. Uh, she is just amazing amazing yeah. like that yeah. that woman has a set of pipes that are just to die for <laughs> you know what's funny about that let me tell you so so that let me yeah i'll give you a little anecdote about that so what happened was i remember just casually you know when vh1 and all these things when they were showing videos you know and and, and stuff yeah. before the reality thing um i remember flipping through there and I saw VH1 and I saw this woman singing this song Chains, which was her, you know, I'm her fairly big hit. Yeah. Yep, yep, oh yep, man, yep. listen. <laughs> I heard that voice. I was like, who in the hell is this woman? Uh -huh. Excuse my friend. Who is this woman? Okay, so two days later I get a call from my buddy who says he can't do the gig with her. And that's how I got that. Two days later, I swear to you. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> I couldn't believe it, you know. Um, yeah, and there's a clip of me on YouTube with her. Uh, Is it? Jay Leno, yeah, on the Jay Leno show. There's oh, a clip wow. There. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, those, he, he was, so he was another person who was responsible, I would say. And, uh, you know, you go out there and it's, you know, it's about connections, you know that. And it's about, um, it's really about, there's good people out there. You know, people always try to give that place a bad rap, but they're good people. Good people are everywhere. You just got to seek them out, yeah. you know? And yeah. that's that's really what got me in, into those sessions. Uh, meeting up with um, one of the former members of, of Take Six was how I got uh, the ah. Barbara Streisand and uh, uh, thing because uh, Mervyn Warren, uh, you know, he he, had, he produced uh, her one of her records, Holy, Holy, uh, I keep. I know the song was called yeah. "The Holy Ground," and uh, I can't remember the record that it was on. But he got me on that, and he also got me on Whitney Houston's uh, "Preacher's Wife" soundtrack. Yeah, wow. And uh, yeah, uh, so it was. Yeah, it's just one of those things you hear about those being at the right place at the right time, and all those different things. Not what you know, who you know, you know, and those things you bring all those, but you obviously have to bring some skill as well. <laughs> Yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I know it sounds funny to say that just a little bit, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, um, and then, you know, of course, the personality, as we were saying before we were on air, is so important. You know, you just have to make sure that you're, you know, that you don't get too big for your britches. Yeah. So we used to say and stuff, because, you know, those things, those opportunities, you can have a great, awesome talent. And if nobody wants to work with you, then, you know, you're just not going to be working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, uh, on that, you know, at the end of the day, what we're doing is just singing. Like it, That's it, it. it, it brings a lot of joy to people and, That's right. um, and you can move people and, and it can be very therapeutic. And so I don't certainly want to trivialize or, or diminish the importance of the role of an artist, of, in this case, a vocal artist in the society, but right. you know, at the end of the day, it is just singing, right? Right, right. You know, right. and yes. uh, but of course, you know, you didn't just stop at doing, um, you know, working with, dear me, Barb, man, um, <laughs> you didn't just stop there. You you are now lecturing at Berkeley. Yes, well, you know, that came about, it was interesting because the chairperson, uh, the previous chairperson of the voice department, uh, when she took over the department, uh, she had this idea that she didn't want to just have, you know, and it, 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 I don't mean it to sound, uh, cast a negative uh, uh, light. She just, she wanted to make sure that she had a balance of those who were theorists and those who were still kind of in the industry yeah. and doing things that was her big thing was that okay let's let's have some people who are still there you know who've had the education but who also um excuse me who also um 
you know, they, they, they've been in the industry as well and stuff. And so that's what she did. She started bringing in people like myself and yeah. uh, my other colleague, Gabrielle Goodman, who I co-authored the online course with, and a few others that have been in the industry. And, you know, some of them make my resume look crazy. Like, you know, yeah, you know, it's really uh, something. Uh, and that's what made, uh, and it's been a great thing. And of course, you know, the big thing for me was I, you know, I could share this story because it's not an unusual story. You know, I had a nodule mm. and I got it removed uh, years ago from the same doctor who's done everybody now, Dr. Stevens, I tell. I tell. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, that's what made me get in touch with Mark, uh, you know, after the that. And, and, you know, of course, I've been with him ever since. Mark, but, Mark but, Baxter. Uh, Mark Baxter. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I know I'm saying <laughs> Yes, Mark Baxter. <laughs> and, okay. uh, yeah. And then later on, get, getting with Jeannie Levetri and a few others and just uh, really just trying to solidify that thing, because you and I both know there was a time when it came to studying, especially when I was Berkeley in the 80s, there was no such thing as, a, you know, an, a rock teacher or an R&B teacher. If you wanted to study, it was classical. That was mm -hmm. it. That's all mm -hmm. you had. There was nothing else, yeah. um, uh, not really, you know. Um, so, so it's been great, and you know, I just want to be, you know, try to be up on that knowledge. I want to give the students those things that I didn't have, yeah. and those yeah. answers that I didn't have yeah. at, at a younger age. And you know, know I'm, I gave a seminar on a, on the weekend to a community group and a vocal seminar, and yes. um, and I made the comment that I think. Um, you know, because we, we were talking about vocal health and we, so we're talking about some of the um, organic and functional disorders that can happen to a voice. Of yes. course, the big one in the room that everyone seems to know about but yet don't know about is vocal nodules. Yes. Oh, I think in the US they sometimes refer to as nodes, aren't they? Um, yes. I think yes. as a result of Pitch Perfect, the movie. But anywho, um, so uh. nodules, and I made the comment that I think Possibly more people in the singing world have had soft swellings than maybe realize that they have had. You know, it's, Absolutely. I think it's more prevalent than we recognize because once upon a time there was this real stigma with it, wasn't there? You know, that's right. Oh, have you heard that Jeff's had nodules? You know, it's, yes, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true, it's true, right. And, yeah. and I think more people have probably had at least soft swellings because nodules kind of go through, this is not the, the, the medical description, but they kind of go through soft swellings to hardened swellings to sort of calloused positions. So there's sort of a phase to them. And I right. think a lot of people, I, I would put my hand up and say when I was touring at, at a very young age, I almost certainly had soft swellings when I look back on what I was experiencing at the time. Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah that the road stuff is a killer. We just don't realize it, you know, and that's why when you hear people talk about, you know, oh, you know, the you, because, you know, we, we both know bad, bad singer, your technique isn't up to point. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. Now, have you been on the road? Yeah, okay, that's then right. you, 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 you have several seats, as the, as the kids say here in the States. I don't know if they say it over there, but the kids here say, you know, when, when somebody's saying something that they, need not talk about they tell them to have several seats oh, that's a, that's a new saying to me yeah they have, oh yeah they okay. say have several seats that means sit your behind down somewhere right yes. okay yeah <laughs> well it's true you know we you know unless you've walked the what is it walk the the journey of of someone else um yes don't right yeah don't be so yeah. quick to judge yes um, absolutely I do want to just in regards to your, you know, you know, you're now teaching at Berkeley and whatever. And I did what I did do is I grabbed a little statement from the Berkeley site that you've made that yes. you that you probably don't even remember making because it's probably oh, it probably, probably got not. it probably got put up there, you know, years ago. But anyway, <laughs> have a listen to this because I love it. I absolutely love it, and I just want to allow us to bounce off this because I think you make some just really um, salient points. So you start off by saying, my professional experience contributes to my teaching in many ways. So that's, I mean, that that in itself is um, really a really important point. And we know that great singing teachers haven't necessarily um, had 
um, you know, stellar performance careers. Not all great singing right. teachers over the world, but but with the advent of the professional singing teacher that it's that has come about, we mm -hmm. are seeing more and more singing teachers out there that really haven't kind of done it at a you know level like yourself, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, you know, that's so important when you're looking for a singing teacher to look for someone that can really take you where they've been, you know? Yes, um, absolutely. You go on to well, say... You know, the, the saying used to be, what we, we both heard that saying, those who, however it goes, those who, those who, those who can't who, do and those who can't, yeah, you know, teach. teach. And it's like, yeah, yeah it's like... No, because I mean, there's some wonderful singers I know that teach and will sing anybody under a rug. Yeah. So that is certainly not true. That's certainly not the case. I think it. I think it's changed a lot because you know, um, as we both know, the industry has changed a lot too. Yeah. So that's that's the other thing. Radically. You know? Yeah, and so you know, I know for me, I I thought it behooves myself if I'm going to do this, especially. Uh, after having the surgery myself, I'm like, okay, let me, let me delve more, let me mm. delve deeper into this thing called voice, you know, and, yeah. and like I said, Marcus helped me put pieces together, Je Jeannie Levetri has helped me, and you know, there's a, you know, you all know, because you're, you're a seeker of knowledge, we're still seeking it out, it, yeah. it never stops. No. It, it never stops. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> having, you, you go on to say, having sung background for many different recording artists, duh, I know how important it is to have your vocal technique together. As a background vocalist, you are basically called upon to become a chameleon. Uh, and I, I just, I want to conflate those two points, you know, the necessity to have your vocal technique together to be able to manipulate your voice to 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 your artistic vision of the that's yes. required in the moment talk us through a bit more about that and how you see those two worlds you know coming together well i can tell you in the past um i can only speak through my journey of it and what i realized um, you know, when I used to hear people say, for instance, oh, that's right in my break, you know, I never knew what that was because I think as men in general, we're just taught to take chest waist way up. So, mm. you know what I mean? Past yeah. that area. You know, I think we, you know, they train the male voice different sometimes in some schools, as you know, yeah. than the female voice, you know? Yeah. And so, um, and it's not that I didn't have access to my head voice or my upper register or whatever we want to call it these days because Lord knows we got oh, so many names now for whatever <laughs> you know mix no there's no such thing as mix and block you know we could go on and on about all that but anyway we, we do not um, have that um, much time no we really do not have that time <laughs> no but but you know what i realized was um especially after uh you know studying with mark a bit was just just uh recognizing oh okay right everything doesn't have to be uh, in one register, so to speak, or it doesn't have to be about me compartmentalizing mm. my voice mm. to think that it's all just about one or the other. It can be a combination of any different equations, as we know. Um, and you, you definitely need that. I think as a, you know, the thing is, if you're a, a front person singing, um, you don't, you have a little bit more uh, luxury, you have the luxury Although you have more responsibility because mm. obviously it's on on the leader, but you can sing the way you sing, and you may be locked into one style, so to speak. Yeah. But as a background singer, depending on what you're doing, you're you're singing. You may be singing, you know, country. Uh, you may be singing um, any style. You may be singing rock one minute. You may be singing jazz or whatever it is, or, you know, and you have to be able to almost be like a, you know, a chameleon. chameleon. You have to be able to come up with a character, Yeah. you know, and I think what it is is about what I didn't know before that I know now. Uh, I'll say that is, is that it's about restoring your, the balance back to your voice. I feel uh, just getting it back to a neutral place because there are going to be some things that you do 
that may take you out of it. You know, for instance, the breathy tone. You know, we you, you know we know about that a lot. We hear a lot of people do that, and certainly in the R and B singing. I grew up in, in, especially in the 80s, there was a lot of that breathy, mm. breathy style, mm. uh, you know. Um, uh, for me, singing with Al, uh, you know, as a male singer, a lot of the stuff, you know, we get paid for upper middle to the high notes. There's no such thing as bass a lot of times. Uh, and I think a lot of the stuff was in that break area and I didn't know how to... Uh, navigate that as well as I do now you know I'm not you know uh, I think you know part of it is also when you're younger the ego <laughs> you don't realize it's ego but there's part of that um, but yeah I, I know that the, there's a difference now with how I go about it than than I did back then yeah uh, and, and it's very important I think it, it it really is the way I often think about it is this sort of sense of you know toddlers Toddlers think in primary colors, don't they? You know, yes. and they think of blue, green, red, yellow, you know, and they, as they get older, they start to think, oh, you can, you can mix colors and you can get browns and pinks and purples. And I think beginner singers are not dissimilar. They can start off as thinking of their voice in these primary colors. You know, it's, I'm either short and a dominant, you know, um, lower register chest voice or I'm head voice or I'm, you know, and, and, and the concept of mix. And again, we won't get into this. I know, yeah, right, you but, know. <laughs> but, you know. It's, All right, you know, we don't want the mix police come out shooting us. Hold it. <laughs> but, but what we, what we have to get to a point of, and I look, I am a great believer in learning to work the registers in isolation. Absolutely. But to a view to have the capacity to to blend them in accordance with whatever artistic outcome you are searching for. Because at the I end like of the day, that. it's all about the communication, is it not? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, which yeah, which brings me to the subject. Excuse me, I uh, keep wiping uh, <laughs> it's, it's on a, camera, it's, it's <laughs> which good. is very pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, good. Uh, but I think it goes to uh, another uh, subject uh, with the R and B style. Mm. And, and I mean, we can maybe speak to that. Oh, That's let's go there. Yeah. Segue. Um, a lot of people, you know, as you know, you you, you know, I, I teach this online course uh, along with uh, Gabrielle Goodman. Uh, we both co-authored this course called R and B vocal styles for the Berkeley online music uh, program that they have. And uh, one of the first assignments we have them do that I love is that we have them sing a slow blues because of course rhythm and blues came out of the blues. So we have them do a 12 bar blues. And what I um, found out or, you know, is that a lot of the young singers aren't comfortable with the space when you're singing a blues. Yeah. Um, they tend to, because their ears right now these days are so, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? They're, they're, they're filled with a lot of riffs and runs because that's what they think R&B is. They think it's just that. Um, and yeah. because there's so many wonderful singers who do it very well, mm -hmm. uh, they tend to, to want to fill up all that space. Yeah. You know, they tend to think that it's about... Uh, just that part of it. But I, I want to tell the listeners out there, uh, even the ones who may come across this and uh, uh, not agree, it's okay. Uh, but uh, soul is not a riff. I just want to be Ooh. very clear about that. Oh, we could stop there. Soul is not a riff. I love it. Yes. How, how is. profound is that? That's... Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I was just... Smacked in the head by that. That was fabulous. Yeah, well, I, I wrote this somewhere before, probably on my Twitter page, because I saw such a proliferation of people who equated the two as as the same thing. Uh, riffing and singing with soul or singing with emotion, they're not mutually exclusive. Mm. Um, and, and uh, you know, I find that too many singers uh, are wrapped up into how many notes they can execute. And those things are great. I love it too. I mean, as a matter of fact, a lot of times I have to say to myself, okay, you know what? 
back off of that. You don't have to do that all the time. It, you know, it's a safety blanket for a lot of people, and I, I get it. Mm. But uh, great singers that I loved in R and B music didn't overdo that. You know, people like Aretha Franklin and I was uh, just about to mention you know, Aretha's name. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. There's no yeah. doubting she had the capacity for it, but it. Oh, she did but, absolutely. But, but you know, that's not she. She didn't feel the need to go there. Oh, as not regularly all the time. as we hear now, do we? Yeah, yeah, not all the time. And I think that, I think what has happened is that the singing has become so heady that people want to be able to be, you know, and this, I'm going to say this started, uh, I'm going to say maybe, uh, well, of course, Mar when Mariah came along, people, I think that's when it really became popular. Yeah. You know, she's, even though Aretha and Stevie and all the other people had been doing it way longer than she has we could go back to jackie wilson and all that but yeah. when she came along you know with the pop thing uh yeah. and now you hear a lot of pop singers with with a lot of that those aesthetics and yeah. i just uh see i would I have just... I, I would have thought um where we really because you're you're absolutely right because i was going to say um christina Aguilera was was kind of where we started to really hear the right well she took the tour after uh mariah she certainly stuff. did and, yeah, uh, yeah yeah now you're correct right to to yeah 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 you know and so but but you know my 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 main point is is that i, I want them to understand uh if you didn't have that what you know oh, one I'll, I'll share this other anecdote one uh colleague of mine out there uh when i lived in la jim gilstrap who has been he's a background vocal singer legend i mean mm. he sang uh he sang the first part of uh you are the sunshine of my life he sang that first he actually sang that that's not stevie on that first part that's jim ah. and uh jim said uh you know he said to me I, i'll never forget this he said uh the only problem with depending on risks is your only cachet or your only weapon we'll say is that you have to then keep coming up with more uh, devastating ones because we've heard all that. So that cannot be your only arsenal in yeah. your bag of, yeah. of things. And what I try to get the singers to do now, I, I also teach a class uh, at Berkeley. Uh, it's a mixed styles improv lab where, where it's geared more towards R&B with some elements of jazz as well. And what I'm trying to get them to do uh, is find out what, what what other ways could you sing if you didn't have to riff? If, if riffing was not in the equation, how else could you be soulful? You know, and that's what I, I think I've, I've, because there's so many people covering that, like Natalie Weiss, who is great. I think yep. that's how you say her name. Yep. She's great. And, yep. and, and and I love that she breaks them down like she does. Yep. But And I thought, well, there's a lot of people who have that out there now from the different channels I've seen because I've been investigating, as I know you have, to see the channels. <laughs> and I thought, well, how else can we approach this? Because yeah. if everybody's got something out about riffing, they think that that's all it's about. And it's like, well, no, listen to Jennifer Holiday. She's not a runner. She's not a riffer. You can't say she's not soulful. Mm. So what makes her soulful? Gladys Knight, mm. uh, same thing. Not a riffer. She doesn't have that kind of agility. Doesn't have this big range because the other thing that I love, uh, I think I don't know if Mark still got it from somebody, uh, Mark Baxter, but he was saying, you know, something to, I'm paraphrasing something about um, uh, that that singing with emotion uh, comes from the uh, the passion of your voice or something. I'm messing it all up. He's going. He's going. I know he's going to say wrong, Jeff. <laughs> But something about, you know, not it being the height of your range, something yeah. about it being the passion in your heart or something like that, uh, but not the depth of your range. Because we tend to, as young singers, think it's about how loud, how high, and how many notes. It's yeah. like, well, and he, that's what we hear, unfortunately, sometimes. Here, here at Voice Essentials, we would, we would often say, and I often make the comment, you know, great singing is not about perfect notes, it's about communication. And that's Absolutely. that's essentially what I, I I know Mark would be saying is it's really comes yeah. down to this sense that it's not it's not about the perfection of your note you know note accuracy it's not about how many notes can you fit into a bar it's right. it's about well what are you communicating it's about the soul yeah well, 
at the end, yes, it's about, you know, what is your intention? Mm. Is your intention to uh, show us what you can do versus show us how you feel? Yeah. There's yeah. a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Between the two. Yeah. Well, well one know. one is a performance. Another one is is an artist, isn't it? You know, like you, you know, there's there's, you know, I, I guess we've got to be careful splitting hairs there. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Well, I think it's. I think it's just important, to, you know, and this is uh, uh, somebody also told me a story of a uh, there's this club in New York. Uh, I don't think they still do uh, not the sugar bar. That's Valerie Simpson's place of Ashford and Simpson fame. Uh, but there was this other there's this other place they used to have uh, open night mics and stuff. I can't re even remember the name. All I remember is that. Somebody said they had all sung uh, Stevie Wonder's Love's in Need. And everybody, it was like a riffing contest. So the guy, the MC said, you know what? I want you all to sing it again, but this time I don't want you to do not one riff. And it was, it, it was apparently very interesting because um, <laughs> none of the people knew the melody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, they didn't know the melody. <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> you know, and it, uh, it's, so that's, it's that's it's, funny. Yeah, you know, unfortunate but funny. Yes, well, I think it's just important that we realize. Okay, uh, uh, you know, uh, Donnie Hathaway is another one I'd put in that category. Uh, just. Uh, you know, uh, tone, uh, you know, Luther Vandross said it, something to, to the point of all the vocal acrobatics in the world will never compensate for good tone production. Now, mm. he didn't say it exactly like that, but that's what I gathered from his words. And well. I, I think, uh, but even with the tone thing, even with that, you know, when you listen to, um, for me, I'm really, I, I'm really touched by hearing uh, um, Nina Simone's version of Feeling Good versus anybody else who's covered it because I feel like, you know, she's more connected in that sense, especially towards the end of the song. Yeah. Uh, the little cadence she does. Uh, I, I feel um, that those things, those elements, that's what I try to cover in the classes. I'm yeah. like, okay, can you cover, you know, I had them the listen to Gladys Knight's uh, and the pips, I've got to use my imagination. And I said, listen, just listen to what she's doing. She's she's not doing a whole bunch of riffs, you, you know. I think I got to use my imagination. I think I could realize. You know, she's not doing any of the riffy thing that people think, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll read. You know, all that <laughs> stuff, which, which I love. I love all that. But I'm like, okay, that's that's just one aspect of R&B because I don't want everybody to think that. I think that's the big thing. I get yeah. students, especially international students, yeah. who when they, you know what I mean, they hear that and that's what they're hearing. And 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 of the newer school, you know, the old school that didn't do that. But yeah. I don't know if a lot of people are listening enough to. I think it's important to not leave out the old school singers. Yeah. Like I said, the names I said, Jennifer Holliday, yeah. the Luther Vandrosses, and and those kind of singers as well to see okay what else can i do i need there's got to be some other uh to quote uh dr trenise's book uh soul ingredients there's got to be some other ingredients yeah. to the equation other than that otherwise it's know. going to be quite a bland meal isn't it you know if you've only if you're only making stuff with one ingredient yes um let me i want to throw i want to throw a concept at you and it is purely a concept and anyone watching um do not go and hang your hat on what i'm about to say because it is it has not uh, it hasn't been researched but we do know that um muscle fibers have um fast twitch and slow twitch fibers right right which is why um f uh, on a on when we take a a look at, for example, the 100 meter race and whatever, we know that Afro-American people actually have higher density of fast twitch muscle fibers, right? So they're very, their muscles can, you know, power on really quickly. Right. I've often wondered, I'd love to have your thought on this and you can tell me if I'm barking up the wrong tree. 
It would be a fascinating study, I reckon, to be able to look at um, whether there is a higher density of fast twitch muscle fibers in people who seem to be able to do those really quick riffs than because I, I I don't have that ability. I'm I you know I can do a little bit, but I mean right. I hear ones like yourself just to you know fly through those notes that melisma and you go whoa, and no doubt I could probably learn to be better, but I don't know that I'd ever be able to get my vocal folds to move at the rate that you do. And I've often wondered whether it could be a muscle fiber thing. What do you th what do you think? Well, I'm going to give you one great example of somebody, again, from your country. Yeah. Who I just discovered her five years ago. Uh-huh. And who's that? Renee Geyer. Yeah. She has those fat. She, she, there's a clip of her. Check it out. Uh, all of you, check it out. Check out uh, Renee Geyer singing Headed in the Right Direction. Uh-huh. Check her out about, mm, I don't know, 230, 250 in there. She does this devastating riff that I I, I didn't know because I, I she something like ah she I mean she has all that I mean all that and you know I mean when I heard her when I saw her to me and she's the most underrated white soul singer I, I've ever heard because a lot of people don't know her don't know her name uh -huh. I heard that voice and I thought wow what authenticity this woman had. And she was ripping back when I, we hadn't heard that come from uh, a white singer or Let, Caucasian. I'm sorry, I'm politically no, correct. I'm trying, you know. Yeah, but no, I that's okay. We we uh, uh, let me clarify because of course we see in the Olympics we'll we'll often see one or two white runners in the final 100 meters as well. So I'm not I'm not per se saying that white people. White people can't they jump. Can't do it. Right, because we know, right, we have enough <laughs> Because people, right? we, we have enough we have... examples of white people doing exactly. it, right? So there's right, no, right. no, right. but I wonder whether we see a, a, a difference in the ratio. And we, we don't know because I don't think anyone has done the stuff. There's, I mean, can you imagine the ethics oh. that you'd have to clear to, to do a study of people's vocal oh. fold musculature to... Find but you out. know, people are but people are studying this. Whether you know whether we you, you're not barking up the wrong tree because we know people are studying. I was actually on a um, on a uh, committee uh, mm. where they were studying a, a vocal technique that you hear in gospel music called uh, squalling. Yeah, which is where they you know really really make that really distorted sound yeah. and stuff. And uh, you know because they're trying to find out well how does that happen and you know, these people are getting, you know, the sore throats and the hurt throats and all the other things that we know people say, oh, you're going to hurt yourself with that, you, you know, and, you know, but there could be something to it. I, I don't, I don't see what that is certainly not offensive. And I think there is something to that. You yeah. know, my, my teacher, my first teacher, uh, she would say to me, yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, Black voices tend to be a little bit darker or richer, and mm -hmm. I, I would probably agree with that mm -hmm. kind of that assessment, at least. But I don't know because I don't know if I'm hearing that now, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it's, to say about that. It's you know an interesting I mean? thing, you know. What is what yeah. is nature? What is nurture? Isn't it? Nurture, you know? right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, when I heard Brene, I thought, well, you know, she was she, unlike uh, Tina Marie, uh, who was you know, in the African-American community, she was probably the most revered white soul singer uh, in the African-American community. Wow. And, but she grew up in uh, pretty much a predominantly black neighborhood. Isn't now, that interesting? As far as I know, Brene Geyer didn't grow up like that. So, <laughs> yeah. it's, so it's, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, absolutely. It's, it's an thing. And I think it's... it's, it's I it's probably important at this point that you and I both say we, there is no offense, you know, driven here to, to people of, of any color. It's, it's exactly. more, we're, we're having an academic discussion here about Absolutely. what are the, what are the implications of, of who can and who can't. And I, right. I can tell you, I definitely didn't grow up in a, <laughs> I mean, my, 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 my upbringing was white. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's funny because I tell people all the time, I, you know, I uh, didn't grow up singing necessarily like that. I mean, I grew up, yeah, I mean, I grew up, uh, 
in, in a church I grew up uh, what I'd call Bapticostal. Bapticostal? Which is basically ba yeah, Baptist and, and yeah. Pentecostal, you know. Uh, uh, and my friends, a lot of my, my friends, you know, they turned me on to singers like uh, the Clark Sisters. Oh, that's the other thing I'd like to say is that, mm. yeah, if you're going to learn, if you want to learn that melisma, listen to those gospel singers. Yeah. They are the best yeah. at that. Yeah. They yeah. are the really yeah. the best at it. And I listen to some of the pop singers that do it. I said, oh, no, these gospel singers make them look like amateurs. Listen to listen them. To if this. you want to learn that, yeah. listen to those singers. Um, yeah. But I think it's all about, you know, at the end of the day, all we can do, Dr. Dan, you know, I tell people I can teach them. Um, I can teach you the tricks. What I can't teach you is discretion. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what I can't teach you. You know, that's what we cannot teach these people. It's like when to do something, how, you know, when yeah. to do it. Yeah. And when not to do it. Uh, uh, that's that's up to the individual. And yeah. that's something they have to learn. You a, know? A, a friend of mine, Kim Chandler, do you know, do you know Kim? I don't know her personally, but yeah. I've seen her up on some of the yeah, vocal so, uh, pages and I stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, fabulous, fabulous singer and, yes, and teacher. Yeah. Yes. She's she's said to me once, you know, the the um, the thing that 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 we hear in really good professional singers is their ability to make good choices. Yes. And and yeah. make them more often than not. Yes. You know, and yeah. when we're beginning our singing journey, we we often we're making choices all the time. But, right. But often we're making poor choices and i think that's probably speaks to this idea of discretion well i think what it is is that i think too as when you're younger i think what happens is yeah you probably are going to want to show off your chops a bit you know you probably are going to do that and i tell my singers i say you know saying to express not impress mm. unless you happen to be joining one of the talent shows or having to do that because yeah. of course you know, when you audition for those things, you only have a few seconds to wow them. So yeah, go for all the bells and whistles. But other than that, as an artist, I think it's important to just know, okay, where, where, what are you, what is your, it get, back to intention, is your intention yeah. to throw people with, you know, all the different tricks? It's like, you know, let's get back to singing from the heart and and, and uh, doing that and, and, and discovering that you know, less sometimes is more in some cases. But, you know, I say it to myself as well. I know it, it can be, it's, I love it. I love, I love, um, I love the fact that people can do all those wonderful mm. uh, tricks and stuff. And I love, you know, uh, but I'm like, okay, now can we deal with other things? There's colors. How about colors? Mm. Dealing with certain colors, you know, can you color your voice differently? Can you do these other things? There's other things that you can draw from and that's what i try to get them to do is yeah. figure out like one student i had uh he has a pretty voice he has a uh, a pretty voice and I, I just said well if you change the vowel shape you don't have to like sometimes you know he wanted to dirty up the, his voice i said no well listen just change the vowel shape sometimes that will cause you to have the dirt without actually going to that gritty sound yeah then i had another student who was so gritty it was like it started to sound a little bit like the cookie monster mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm like oh that's a little bit too much <laughs> you know so it's, it's 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 you know it's interesting having uh done this i can't believe it, it'll be uh 20 years now i, I just uh it's crazy that i've been Wow. See, I, 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 yeah, it's been, it's, it's crazy, you know, and still learning and still growing and still inspired by my students and, oh. and by, you know, people who, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm, I'm 25 years next year teaching and, yeah. and uh, I, I, it's, you know, the more, you know, the more you realize you don't, right. It's, it's just a constant oh journey of learning. There is so <laughs> much to know. Yes, um, and uh, and you've you've been so kind. We're 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 out of time, believe it or not. We. <laughs> I know. You know we could go on. You knew, you knew this was going to happen. I right? did we know this was going to happen. <laughs> the moment the moment we we connected before the show, I knew this would happen. We <laughs> we are going to have to get back get you back next year, I think, um, because there's so much more that I wanted to talk about phrasing and you know your backing vocal skills and all. 
we're going to have to do that another time. I have yeah. thoroughly enjoyed my time with you. I know the people who have been watching, who is nearly 200 people over the course of our conversation, have yes. really enjoyed it. And uh, hey, guys, if you've enjoyed today, make sure you leave a thumbs up on the, the video. Jeff, do you want to uh, just say a, a quick goodbye before I, I wrap up? Yes, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I, I know some of you, uh, well, probably quite a few of you don't don't know me, uh, uh, and some of you I saw, does it give lessons? Uh, I, Berkeley takes up most of my time, but you know, uh, you can reach me through the, my uh, website and stuff, and, and uh, we can talk and, and figure something out, perhaps, <laughs> in my schedule. But I, I, I just uh, um, thank you, uh, Dr. Dan, for having me here. It's been a pleasure. I, I, I'm honored, and uh, everybody keep singing, keep learning, keep growing. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, we, we are just so... I, I am constantly humbled by the, the, the caliber of people that we have onto this show. People who... I, I literally... Um, some of them I've known, like Jeff, um, we've interacted on Facebook a couple of times. Some people yes. I just reached out to via email. And just the the generosity of spirit that people respond with is just just wonderful. So thank you, Jeff, again for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank uh, you. I really appreciate it, Dan. Good on Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> hey, everyone, no, make sure you share this video with your friends and family. And... Uh, we, gee, we're getting some some stilted stuff going on here. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Um, tune in next week. We will do a Q&A session next week, 2 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We'll answer um, all of the questions that have been in the live chat today and, uh, and, and, of course, some more next week. And I hope you'll be able to join in. But, of course, because I've got to go and teach now, so <laughs> I've got a student that's about to knock on the door. So um, oh. until I see you in two weeks, uh, not two weeks, next week, I'll see you again soon. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well. <laughs>